Meet Bexar County, Texas Judge Nelson W. Wolf, who happens to be running for re-election for county judge for a fifth term. But what exactly does a county judge do? The county judge is the presiding officer of the Bexar County Commissioner's Court, or in other words, it's your county's commission. He's also the spokesperson and ceremonial head of the Bexar County, Texas government, the county where San Antonio, Texas is located, a county of about a little over two million people. These band of criminals you see on your screen are the filth that make up the Bexar County, Texas Commissioner's Court. I whited out one of the faces that cannot associate one of the commissioners with the criminal, felony, and treasonous actions of those you see who make up the court. On the left you have Commissioner of Precinct 1, Chico Rodriguez. Standing next to him, you have Commissioner Paul Elizon of Precinct 2. There in the middle is County Judge Nelson W. Wolf. On the other end, you have Kevin Wolf of Precinct 3. Now, I'm not sure if he is the son or brother, uh, or if he's related to Judge Wolf, but I wouldn't doubt it. As you know, the cronyism, it runs deep, so does the nepotism. But these are the men responsible for budgetary decisions, tax and revenue decisions, and by the judiciary or other committees for Bexar County, Texas. These criminals also appoint and monitor the actions of all county department heads other than those offices headed by elected officials. Now here you have Tommy Calvert, who is Bexar County Commissioner for Precinct Number 4. He's the youngest and first African American County Commissioner in more than 170 years of Bexar County history. Los Angeles Weekly called him San Antonio's Wonderkind, and Gardner Selby of the Austin American Statesman said he is one to watch in Texas politics. And when you have mainstream media is giving public figures praise, me personally, I worry about that and I watch for that. Because usually there's some sort of turncoat and have traitor characteristics as well as a do-for-self mentality and attitude. Calvert started his own public relations firm, um, Calvert International Consulting, or CIC, in 2002. Now, over the past 16 years, CIC has been a trusted advisor to public sector leaders. What does that mean is that he's been advising public officials and people of the sort who yield public influence and impact and hold these public offices for over 16 years. I wonder then who are some of these people he's been advising for those 16 years in Texas of all places. Take Go back 16 years, that's 2002. Calvert's public affairs work began in 1998 when he served as an aide to the San Antonio City Council. His work has taken him to positions in the Texas House of Representatives as well as the United States Congress where he served as Director of Special Projects for the Chairman of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. I'll let that one sink in for a second. Calvert served in the United States Congress as Director of Special Projects for the Chairman of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. In addition, Calvert has advised San Antonio's municipal water suppliers, numerous elected officials, business leaders, and executive level educators of both public and charter schools. The man on the left with the colorful scarf and yellow tie standing behind him is his father, and the woman standing behind him is his mother. Um, and the other gentleman behind him to the right, the Hispanic guy, that was the former commissioner as he's being sworn in. And we can obviously see that he is black and that both of his parents are black. These are the people who are supposed to represent the issues of black people in America. And I wonder how many special projects he worked on for black people when he was at the United States Representative and before Congress. You know, and, and just for the simple fact that you even work for that caucus, it's like, what have you done for us? on the words of Janet Jackson, what have you done for us lately? So for two years, Calvert was chief of external operations for the world's leading anti-slavery and human trafficking organization. The name of that organization is the American Anti-Slavery Group. That, that, that's like an oxymoron. I don't even know why they had that crap in there. And this fool is a part of it. But anyway, in this capacity, he worked to free and empower survivors of slavery and genocide from around the world. I don't know what the hell he's doing right here. He's, he's freeing these brothers from slavery and genocide right here in America. Because we're under attack and they keep continuing to try to enslave us in every way possible. Because they, they thrive off free labor. They're built off of free labor. They can't survive without it. So it says he spoke tirelessly across the United States to encourage Americans, the press, and politicians to enjoy contemporary slavery and genocide. 
Bless and enjoy. I meant in contemporary slavery and genocide. I don't know what the hell is more contemporary than these private prisons paid for by state and federal governments here in America for free or uh, slave labor, profiting themselves, these corporations as well. But what's interesting is this is Abolish's main page, as you see. And of course, one of the first things that comes up is a picture of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But why would there be an article about Farrakhan as though he was a slave trafficker? It says Farrakhan's secret relationship, as you see. And this is the deflection. This is what they try to do. They try to deflect from their, their trash. But in headlines, they used to speak of the relation between black students at UC Berkeley and Minister Farrakhan. It goes to say the Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, addressed, notice how they have addressed underlined in red, but an estimated 600 students at UC Berkeley last Saturday and told black students not to befriend any Jew without first reading the secret relationship between blacks and Jews, a book whose thesis is that the Jews were behind the black slave trade. Heck of a way to start. Here you have some of the so-called stories from survivors that they have rescued after your donation and return these people to freedom and their regular lives. But notice how they are all black and all from Africa. And all the enslavers are Islamic, while all those saviors are white. Their page says, Today I urge you to give generously for the sake of others still in chains. I don't know if that means the brothers and sisters here in America still in chains with this prison industrial complex and free labor, or the children that they keep taking uh, and putting in these foster care so they can harvest their organs and things of that nature. I don't know if that's who they're friends, but if, if it's not, they're a scam. They need to be disbanded and shut down. But on their page it says, Today I urge you to give generously for the sake of others still in chains. Now get a load of this. $60 liberates one slave. $250 liberates one slave and provides tools for a new life or survival kit, um, sorghum for food and seeds for planting and more. It says your tax deductible donations make a life saving difference to the persecuted and you'll have the joy of knowing you helped set someone free this Christmas. I swear if this ain't an infomercial for Christmas, <laughs> I don't know what it is. But uh, these are the type of organizations our so-called black political leaders support and give their time and efforts to. Now just imagine if he put forth these same energies, efforts, and time for black American DOS issues, we have what we could have gotten done had he went around the country doing the same efforts. It says, having already secured $432 million for Precinct 4's infrastructure in his lifetime, Commissioner Calvert has hit the ground running. As County Commissioner, Calvert will make public safety a priority by working with neighborhood associations, businesses, sheriffs, and constables to increase manpower for patrols as well as build a sheriff's substation on the northeast side. This is the same tough on crime whites used to get votes money and more officers on the street so they can kill and lock up more black men, black women, black children and destroy homes and communities. This is the same crap that Obama and Cory Booker and Kamala Trash Harris spout of their mouths. It says Calvert will work with commissioners courts to pass a policy of hiring people from neighborhoods where it builds infrastructure. He also has a plan to help create jobs with Precinct 4. I'd like for you to meet Renee Watson. Manager of Bexar County Small Minority and Women Business Enterprise Program, or the SMWBE. Renee Watson has been named a champion of diversity. There's that word diversity. By diversitybusiness.com. And has named its honorees, and this was during 2013, they had named their honorees um, Champions of Diversity Award. And the award recognizes individuals for their outstanding achievements in various diversity initiatives with their companies and their communities. We're not going to get into much about who she is other than the fact that she is the manager of Bexar County's Small Minority and Women Business Enterprise Program. I think the name of the program she runs and the award she is being considered for and just looking at her says it all. You know, so we're not going to go too much into her, but we'll, she'll come back up later as, as the story goes on and you can understand why. Brings us back to this guy, Bexar County, Texas Judge Nelson W. Wolf. And these guys, the county commissioners minus Commissioner Calvert. So this is Bexar County Judge's Office, Wolf, and they're actually being accused of a bid rigging scheme. 
to set up the Black Chamber of Commerce of Bexar County to get $370,000 from Bexar County without an RFP, which is illegal under state procurement law in the state of Texas. So for those of you who don't know, what this article is saying is, before companies, businesses, and organizations and the like can bid on a government contract, funding and the like, there must have been an RFP submitted or a request for a proposal presented for a vote and improve approval by the commissioner's court, which is what you saw them doing, voting on it. Well, once approved, it will be signed, and then a public notice will usually go out soliciting bids for this labor or monies or what have you, depending on the finances or what they are for. Sometimes there's no solicitation as well. It just depends on what they're, what they're bidding for and what they're looking for. So it says, of course, allegedly, but we know they did it in the truth. But it says the contract was signed prior to approval by the commissioner's court. In addition, commissioner's court documents were falsified to its peer as though the small business department director, Renee Watson, had given budgetary authority to fund the Alamo Black Chambers of Commerce. However, emails indicate that Watson's department did not develop the program because they already had a program in place and that the duplicative program was organized out of County Judge Nelson Wolf's office, which you see them here voting and scrambling and passing this nefarious as well as falsified and forged documents within the court. Sources have told the San Antonio Observer that the scheme would have cut the small business department's budget in half, and it could have led to Renee Watson being fired which they all should be in jail, and that should be a criminal act, as she had lost her job, and I'm sure criminal charges would have come as well. But it says, moreover, the Alamo City Black Chamber of Commerce funding was to be used as an excuse to not complete the county's disparity study. So what you're seeing right there is a s disparity study done by Bexter County, and these are all the people who were participating in that study and helped to get this study about. The disparity study would support the creation of affirmative action contracting policies which would help African American businesses compete by creating an equal playing field. So this commissioner's court, these degenerate criminals, criminals have shut down a study that would create affirmative action contracting policies which would help black business and DS descendants of slave businesses compete by creating an equal playing field and getting government contracts across the board from universities to military to tech to industry to the Department of Transportation. So if you don't understand the magnitude of what it would do for the black American community economically and socially, you have to understand what they're doing. So these commissioners, these dirtbags that you're seeing, they're the government in the county of Bexar, Texas, and they have committed criminal acts to prevent that from happening. How and why are we not in uproar? I don't understand why people are in uproar about this. And, and, and this is an issue for the world court, but we know the world court won't get anything. But this is open racial hostility and warfare against its own citizens by the United States government. And let's see who's at war against you, black man. You see, and black woman and child, it's your government. What you're looking at is the logo for the Association of General Contractors of America. Many of you speak a lot of times, you know, people speak in negative ways of the business practices of black businesses, the black communities, and then many of you make excuses for why you don't do business and, you know, how bad their business is, but you never address the reason for it or, or the underlying cause of it. We have your government colluding with a general contractors association to destroy the businesses of your community, but your bad mouthing doesn't help that. It doesn't, you're not doing business with them does not help that. It makes it even worse because then you are at open warfare and hostility against your own businesses of your own community and your own people. So, you know, many people don't want to do business with black businesses because they don't have contractors or contractors licenses, but you don't understand the cost of contractor licensing and then you have to go through the testing and then once you pass, not only is it non-refundable, but if you do pass, they still have the discretion to deny you a contractor's license. At, at, at their discretion so know what you're talking about before you start opening your mouth about businesses many people say oh, I have black contractors who weren't good and this and that many of you customers suck y'all don't want to pay you make a lot of excuses you complain then you try to lowball then you try to you know talk talk them into doing way more than what you were agreed for what your money can afford so 
what it says about the National Association of General Contractors. It says the Association of General Contractors sent an email to Bexter County Commissioner's Court requesting review of that contract for that $170,000 for the Black Chamber of Commerce that they never submitted or requested or put in paperwork to get. But yet these judges and these commissioners filled out these documents and these paperwork claiming and stating that they asked for this money, signed it and forged it, and then put it through without even coming before the commissioner's court, before the judge. And they put all this stuff on court documents and court paper in the public court record. How are they not in prison? But it says, so, you know, they asked and requested that. Why were they requesting uh, and reviewing that contract? They're not the government. It goes on to say that the group, along with other stakeholders, other stakeholders, I wonder who these stakeholders are. But it says, along with the group, other stakeholders, questioned the resources in the county judge's program, as well as the capacity of the Alamo Black Chamber of Commerce, which has no director to implement the program. So you have the, the county commissioner court, you have the Association of General Contractors for America, which is a national organization, and it says other stakeholders, which I'm sure are other businesses, I'm sure are other, you know, uh, entities and things of that nature, who like their, their position of privilege, of white privilege, without having to compete. They really can't compete. They don't want to compete. They have no creation history. They have no, you know, nothing that they came up with, they, nothing. So they don't want to have to compete. They want to keep this position that they're in. It says sources also indicated that the Association of General Contractors of America and other organizations allied with Judge Wolf allegedly convinced, we won't say allegedly, allied with Judge Wolf conceived of the plot, because it's not alleged if it's in court documents and you forged them and you already filed those documents in court. So this is these white folks using this alleged. But what's interesting is this article came from the radio station of Cavert, Commissioner Cavert two weeks ago. This is a radio station that he co-founded, a Christian radio station, of course, or whatever they call it. But this is where this article came from, from this this black commissioner, his 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 radio station. But all I do is play music on there. I've been listening to that crap. All I do is play old music, gospel music, stupid crap, like most black radio stations do. They don't inform you or do anything positive or beneficial for your people. But it says sources also indicated that the. AGC or Association of General Contractors and other organizations allied with Judge Wolf allegedly conceived of the plot to undermine efforts to help black business and hurt Commissioner Tommy Calvert. I'm going to read that again. It says they conceived of the plot to undermine efforts to help black businesses and hurt Commissioner Tommy Calvert, hoping to create a cloud of investigation over the commissioner that now sits over the county judge's office. How is this Contractors Association not being investigated and shut down for good and the people thrown in jail is my question. How are these commissioners and judges not in prison and allowed to serve? How is it allowed to even run for another office term? And why? how are they still allowed to be over these funds? Where are the people on this? Where is the mainstream media on this? This is just another reminder that not only do we need our own associations and organizations and institutions that work in our favor and for our benefit and no one else, black everything, and nothing else, black first and nothing else, but it's also is a reminder that we can't go to their organizations, their associations, we can't look at ourselves from their viewpoint or their perspective, we can't judge ourselves from their eyes and their mindset, they are our open enemy, period, and as you see them here, this is them, this is the site where I got it from an article from, but that's them in court falsifying those documents. On your screen, you're looking at T.J. Mays, Bexter County Judge Nelson Wolf, his chief of staff. So, this is part of the people, of course, when it says the, the court, it's not just the commissioners, they have staff members as well. But who is this guy? And, and why are we even putting him on there? We're, we're trying to show, and I'm going to show you that white supremacy is a team sport. They all play part from the top all the way down to the bottom. They all have a role to play, and they play it very well. T.J. Mays is a public servant, educator, and community leader. He currently serves as Chief of Staff for Bexar County Judge Nelson Wolf, and previously served as Chief of Staff to San Antonio Councilman Ron Nirenberg, who was subsequently elected Mayor of San Antonio. T.J. teaches, in, uh, uh, and teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in law, public policy, and currently holds dual appointments at the UTSA College of Public Policy and UTSA College of Liberal and Fine Arts. 
He not only teaches public policy, but he's in a position to have it implemented while teaching the youth what public policy benefits white society and white supremacy. It's a cold piece of work how these motherfuckers be working, boy. In 2018, he was appointed by Councilman Trevino to serve as District 1 representative on the Port Authority of San Antonio Board of Directors. This is a perfect example of how they work together to covertly wage economic war against us. They'll smile at you, sit next to you at church, share the hymn book with you, with their arm around you. And while y'all sing to Jesus, they will have a potluck and invite you to their home for the potluck and even come to your home. All the while organizing government agencies as well as private agencies against you and me as a group, not individuals. Here you see in the picture, this is his wife, Laura. She's a PR manager for the Tricentennial Commission and communication strategist for the city of San Antonio. This is his wife, Laura May. She's, um, hold on. she determines the type and what communication for the city of San Antonio, Texas is put out to the world. So anything about Texas, the history and things of that nature for the Tricentennial Commission or 300 years of San Antonio's history, she is the one who determines what gets put out. You understand? And, and, and so in an article written by Vincent C. Davis, San Antonio Express News, entitled, Lack of Diversity in Tricentennial Coverage Raises Red Flags. So this, you see here, this is the city of San Antonio in Bexar County, Tricentennial Commission. And this is their highway book that they're putting out. And this is the, or, or the um, Tricentennial Coverage, or the article written by Vincent C. Davis. This is what he's referring to. So when historian and landscape architect Everett L. Flynn opened the January issue of Texas Highways, he was shocked by the content, or rather the lack of it. Fly was upset about San Antonio tricentennial timeline in which the only references to African American DOS were as slaves, and the only black person mentioned by name was Spurs great George Gervin, as he was identified as a person of color. That's that ambiguity, you know. Work on the January edition of the Texas Department of Transportation magazine began in August when the events editor visited the Tricentennial Commission office about the timeline. Laura Mays, communication strategist for the city, said the commission provided background information, did a fact check on a few items, and set up interviews with the Witt Museum. But the city didn't see the final timeline before the publication, she said. So basically, you over this book and this, time, this publication, and you let it be put out without checking it first. The city's maze noted that some of the events scheduled for the rest of the year are focused on African American history. They include the local NAACP's chapter centennial anniversary and the Carver Community Cultural Center San Antonio Door Project, which explores the common heritage of city residents regardless of where they live. So... So some people may think that this doesn't matter or, you know, but when you, again, this is open warfare, open warfare against you, black man, black woman, black community, black child, black businesses, by your state, by your government, by your government entities and agencies, by private associations in collusion, in concert with your government. Let that sink in. You can't get that state contract for the Parks and Rec Department with your landscape company to take care of all the Parks and Rec. Their, their, their outside activities in regards to, you know, say planting and things of that nature. You can't get that Highway Dep uh, Transportation Department contract to go clean up the freeways. Why? Because they have this prison labor doing it and they're giving them the contract. You can't get, you know, a, a military contract. Why? Because they're they're working in collusion against you to prevent that from happening, to prevent this study. But that you have these department agencies taking your tax dollars to work against you. This is open warfare by your government. Period. This is a world court issue. This is a humanitarian world court issue. But we also know that whole world court stuff. That's the same white supremacists, Asians, Arabs, Latino. Black first black forever that has to be your mindset or else we won't be here in the future we will be in these museums we will be on these highways that they're saying yeah there used to be some black folk they're not going to talk about us they're trying to wipe you out of history completely yet you're defeated many of you don't want to face the reality of what you already know because you're defeated 
you want to try to find your little place in this white supremacist world as though they're not going to come for you. They don't discriminate. They don't show no mercy to nobody. You understand what I'm saying? So it says the Tricentennial Commission is celebrating 300 years of San Antonio history and are doing so by putting together that book regarding highways and attractions to see that via tourism and culture and history it will generate income in these places that are highlighted in this book by attracting tourism through telling a historical narrative of Bexar County, Texas. This brings us back to the Small Business Administration and Entrepreneurship Department of Bexar County. The department is for the assistance, support, and growth of the so-called small business, women's business, and minority-owned businesses, which we know that to mean all-inclusive, yet exclusive of black businesses. Now we're back to these guys, the Association of General Contractors of America. It says they are the leading association for the construction industry. With over 26,000 member firms, the Association of General Contractors of America provides a full range of services satisfying the needs and concerns of its members thereby improving the quality of construction and protecting the public interest. So if you're not a member, they don't work on your behalf. They have a lot of services and things that they provide for you, but they also can determine who can become a member, who cannot. Because the general contractor is how you become one. You, you study, you take a test, you show, you know, background information, of, you know, have the knowledge and things of that nature. You pay your non-refundable fee. And then once you do so, even if you pass, they can still deny you. Says the Associated General Contractors of America is comprised of 89 charter chapter affiliates and provides its chapters and their members with professional development opportunities, up to the minute information and trends in the industry, and discounts on products, programs, and services. To become a member of Agency of America, you must first become a member of a local agency chapter. So, yeah, we can, we can provide you with opportunities to do what? To get government contracts. To help you train, to help you study, to ha have lower costing and things of that nature. You hear a lot of black businesses say, man, the cost is just so high. So we can't compete in price-wise because our, the costs are higher for us. You understand? With over 26,000 member firms, AGC provides a full range of services satisfying the needs and concerns of its members, thereby improving the quality of construction and protecting the public interest. Blacks and black businesses are not the members it's referring to, but just the opposite. And the public interest it's referring to is the interest of all other groups that must maintain blacks being at the bottom economically and socially in order to maintain their position above us. So when you think about these contractors and these things of that nature, understand why you are at the bottom and who's working against you to keep you there. Which brings us back to these criminals and crooks. These guys forged false documents false paperwork they signed uh, uh, the lady's name they submitted it on behalf of the black chamber of commerce and look at them they'll be able to still be in office and still stand and they're not in jail not in the prison that's ridiculous and you should be in an uproar let's take a look at the divisions of the texas department of transportation and read them get an understanding of what your government is uh, colluding against you with your tax dollars to keep and prevent you from having these types of contracts. It says from railroad crossings to right of way, traffic cameras to travel maps, and bridge inspections to bid opportunities, Texas DOT's divisions handle a diverse range of services for the agency. Services that black businesses could be bidding on these contracts, but they are colluding to prevent you from doing so. Aviation, bridge, civil rights, communication, compliance construction, contract services, design, environmental affairs, financial management, fleet operations, those are trucks and buses, fleets, it could be fleets of ships, it could be fleets of planes, F um, general counsel, government affairs, human resources, uh, information management, internal audit, maintenance, maritime, materials and tests, um, occupational safety, procurement, professional engineering procurement services. Who gonna go get the professional engineer for us? Well, we have a company that we can bid to find these professional engineers for you. Um, project finance, debt and strategic contracts, public transportation. Just imagine if, if a black business got a public transportation contract. Think about that. Rail, research and technology. Think of a black business got a rail contract. Research and technology implementation. 
right of way, strategic planning, um, support services, toll operations, traffic safety, transportation planning and programming, travel information, the, the tricentennial highway book that they put out. We have no friends. The Tricentennial Commission purposely left out these landmarks, your history, our history, the country's history, and embellished and fabricated their own in order to socially and economically continue to destroy, demean, and degrade the black businesses, which in turn destroys the black community, the black family, and the black children. You have nothing if you have no community, if you have no businesses have no infrastructure, if you have no associations, if you have no um, organizations and institutions that are specifically and only for you, for me, for us. This is what they're trying to prevent. This man and his wife should be in jail. This is what they're trying to prevent. These people should all be in jail, in, in prison. Take, take a look at some of the, so this is Commissioner Rodriguez. Look at some of the boards he serves on. Several boards um, and commissions whose work supposedly positively impacts the residents of Dexter County. Yeah, white residents, Latino residents, Hispanic, you know, Asian residents. He's on the Industrial Development Corporation, where he serves as president of the board. He's on the Housing Finance Corporation, where he serves as vice president. You're talking about that gentrification. Your county commissioners who determine housing finance, they're in the courts working your elected officials with your tax dollars are working to gentrify you through the use of the government. You have to wake up, people. You have to get it together. Um, he's also what? The Committee of Six, San Antonio River Improvement Project. The Committee of Seven, Regional Flood Project. The Metropolitan Planning Organization, Transparency Policy Board, the Youth Commission Task Force, a Youth Commission Task Force. This is your commissioner. Here's your other commissioner, State Rep. Uh, uh, um, commissioner Paul Elizondo, Precinct 2. He was a state representative for District 57 from 1978 to 1980. House Committee on State Affairs, House Committee on Public Education, House Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Bexter County Commissioner for Precinct 2 from 1983 to 2014. His community involvement, it says Alamo uh, Council of Government um, for Bexter County. Uh, he was a former chair. Bexter County Health Facilities Corporation. That's your health issues, the way you have lack of them. Former Vice President. Bexter County Housing Finance, more gentrification. And it goes on and on. He's on a Transportation Steering Committee. He's on a metropolitan plan, um, planning organization. You know, so these same people are in these same, are in multiple different organizations, multiple different commissions, but they're all working in collusion against you black people. We are at war. Here's Bexter County Commissioner Kevin Wolf. He was a former chair of Military Affairs Committee. Think if you just got a military contract. Commissioner Wolf completed the joint land use study. It said research in there. I think if you had that joint land use study contract black businesses where you could study that joint land use and joint with who? You understand? It was an initiative to free over 5,000 acres at Camp Bullets for field training. You understand who these people? He was on the Chamber of uh, 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 Commerce. Well, actually, let me back up and let me rephrase that. It said the Military Transformation Task Force is a group made up of representatives from the city, the county, Chamber of Commerce, and military. This group is tasked, now Chamber of Commerce, that's your businesses, but not the Black Chamber of Commerce. You see, when they talk about other, uh, other people who have, you know, who allied that with them, that's your Chamber of Commerce. These are other groups. You have Judge Wolf himself, look at the picture at him up top. Bexter County Judge Nelson Wolf, he's been served in office since 1971, elected to the Texas House of Representatives, elected to Texas State Senate in 1973, San Antonio City Council 1987, San Antonio Mayor 1991, 1995. You have to understand who these people are. He was appointed, um, he was San Antonio Mayor. He was Bexar County Judge, appointed in 2001 until present. Pursuing a fifth term as Bexar County Judge, He's the second person over a hundred years to be both mayor of San Antonio and a Bexar County judge. 
Judge Wolf also initiated a $415 million visitor tax back bond. There go their visitor taxes again. Thus, that highway commission didn't want them tax and visitor taxes to come through your towns and come through your your sites and to your museums. This this is the collusion that they're doing to prevent that traffic from coming there. But it aided 13 amateur sports facilities, the Tobin Center for the Fine Arts Improvements, to the AT and T Center. AT and T, y'all need tax dollars. How many? How many? How much are, of the black community is seeing any of that money? And it was went for improvements. It says the San Antonio River, including the Eight Mile Mission Reach. River improvements pro uh, proved vital to the UNESCO World Heritage Designation for the Spanish colonial missions on San Antonio's south side. So they tell you right there, okay, the Latinos, that's the immigration thing, and you blast the this immigration, but these immigrants are coming in here, and they're taking everything that your ancestors built and worked for, and your justice claim that your ancestors died for. We have a unique and specific justice claim here, as you often hear Yvette Carnell say. Which she's right. We are the descendants of slaves. We built this place for free. We were the currency that was exchanged. You have to understand what it, what, you know. What was the slave economy? These people have been working all this long to prevent you from rising and lifting, and they're using the government to do so. And these same people that you sit next to at work, you sit next to at church, are the ones who are voting these people in office. But you want to be universal and inclusive, though. This is them once again making their vote. This is them not only falsifying documentation, submitting it to the court and public records, committing perjury, committing a fraud and a scam to not only get someone fired, but to have criminal charges brought up, as well as a organization association, the Black Chamber of Commerce. To disqualify them and remove any ability from them getting funds. This is them colluding. This is them at work right now. This is what they have done. And they should be in jail. There should be no. How is this not major, major news? So we need everyone to contact their offices, contact their numbers, contact the sheriffs and these people, and we need to get them out of there. They need to be in jail. There needs to be a push for them to be in prison. There needs to be a push for this American General Contractors Association to be disbanded and disallowed, but because it's a private association, that's how they do it. But we need to remove it from being in cooperation and working with the U.S. government. Look at their faces. The lady on the top right, I didn't go into her too much. That's Judge Wolf's wife and her foundation she created to actually restore that county courthouse to its former glory, the children's courthouse as well as to his former glory and some other nonsense. And that was the whole purpose of her foundation. I thank you for joining us. We knew. We're coming with more stuff. We got to fight. We got to keep going. These people need to be in jail. Please like, please share, please subscribe. The links are down below. Follow us on, you know, Patreon and other places. And we'll see you next time. Peace.